And so today we are reviewing the Nesta Miranda Art Deco. Uh, look right at the bottom of your screen there for details, which I will be adding once we edit the video because I really don't even know what's in this thing right now. Sometimes it's more exciting that way. Looks like a very nice little robusto size dark cigar. Um, and the aroma released when I took the wrapper off was very uh, chocolatey. Very chocolatey, deep chocolatey cocoa type smell. Nice cigar, nice looking cigar. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, we are back and we are going to clip this little guy. Alright, construction looks pretty good. Standard Robusto, a chocolatey brown wrapper, uh, kind of like a milk chocolatey brown wrapper, with some fairly large veins. There's one going all the way down like that. Uh, so it looks like a Nicaraguan wrapper to me. Uh, nice foot, not too, too overfilled, uh, but good, and a um, little space in there, no stems. Well, actually, there is a bunch of tiny little stems which are very, very similar in color to the tobacco itself, so they're hard to see. But there are some stems. Might be a little extra harshness in there. It's a little oily, and uh, there are a couple of a couple of undesirable spots and marks here and there on the on the wrapper, as far as appearance goes. But construction looks solid. Not too tight. No loose spots. Let's give it a cut and see what we get here. Very coffee-esque pre-draw with a lot of cocoa type flavor. Mm. A lot of cocoa type flavor. Somebody recently just asked me, uh, you know, that it said they used to smoke uh, a while back Punch uh, Mad Mad, we call it Mad Mad, Maduro, Double Maduro, Maduro Maduro Rothschilds. They have Maduro wrapper, Maduro binder, and then uh, filler, which is Dominican Nicaraguan and Honduran, so it's a bit of a mutt cigar. I mean, it's a lot, it's, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, and it's a nice little smoke, nice short little smoke. Uh, and he loved them because they had a really rich chocolatey flavor, uh, one that he can't seem to find in any other cigar because he's asking. So I recommended, one of, one of my recommendations was the uh, Hoyo, uh, double, the Hoyo Epicure Number no. 2 Maduro. We're talking about Dominican cigars here, uh, I'm sorry, Honduran cigars domestic cigars. Uh, it's also a Honduran made cigar. It also has two Maduro, Maduro wrap and Maduro binder. It also has the same, almost the same type of blend, so it should be very close. But the thing is, the Punch Rothschild Maduro Maduro is still on the market, so I mean, if they changed up, then they changed up. That Hoyo uh, Exc Excalibur um, Epicure 2 Maduro is by, is so close, it's by the same company. It's released by the same company. So, you know, you may not have luck with that, or you may have luck with that. It's just a different, it's a shot in the dark. But like I said, I didn't know about this one. It has a cocoa-y smell. It has a lot of cocoa notes on the pre-draw. A little raisiny, a little, uh, little bit of raisiny type flavor there. I'm going to just, um, just going to torch this one. I don't know why. I wasn't going to, but I just grabbed my torch and started blasting it. So <laughs> I guess I guess uh, I couldn't wait any longer. It, 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 like I wasn't even thinking about it. It just fucking happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfumey, woody type aroma.
right away some very strong coffee notes. Big thick draw, very nice draw. Nice draw. Not tight, not loose, just hardly any resistance though. I would say it's it's like, you know, it's it's one gram of pressure less on the roll from becoming an air draw. It's just but obviously it's just very nice. A lot of coffee esque type flavor. A lot of perfumey floral type notes. A little woody in the front. Very little salt. Oh no, there's some. Actually some. Not in the smoke, on the filler. You know, there's like salt and coffee and. Definitely a flavorful little cigar. Hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely, I would say this is definitely Nicaraguan. No doubt about that. I really don't know what it is, but I'm saying it's Nicaraguan. I could be wrong, in which case I'll just edit the video. <laughs> I'm only kidding. A lot of times when I'm wrong, I admit it. I say, oh, I was wrong about that. Somebody, excuse me, excuse me for a second. I just went on my second part of that job interview today, for the maintenance job. And, uh, no, just a friend. And I am currently waiting to hear back from them. So, I have a cigar lined up for that. Very little spice, if any. Woody, with a lot of strong coffee notes. Salty and a bit of kind of like, uh, almost a little bit of twanginess, almost a little bit of twanginess, a little bit of twanginess on the filler, and the filler on the tongue. Mm. I have a feeling when I chew up this cigar more, it's gonna release a lot of nice flavor. In the filler. Sometimes I'm tempted just to like, Argh! you do that and fuck up the whole cigar. You got to get it wet slowly and just keep kind of. It's like I said, there's the flavor of the smoke and then there's the flavor of the tobacco in your mouth. And a lot of times the way those two mingle determine whether the cigar is going to be fantastic or not. At least that's my personal opinion about cigars and flavor. Never really heard anybody else say that about a cigar, describe it like that, you know? You know, I read a lot of stuff on cigars and I never really read anybody saying like, well, you know, when you have a cigar in your mouth, you get two different types of, they always just talk about, you know, the flavor of the cigar is. There's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot more to it. The flavor of the cigar is, and then the flavor of the smoke is. You can't just say, you know, this cigar tastes like, you know, I mean, you can say it that way, but then, for instance, when I pull my tongue back and I don't let it touch the filler and I just kind of put my, you know, and that's what I was talking about in my beginner's lessons, if the difference if you put a straight cut or a punch and you block off a lot of that filler from getting in on the tongue and everything, you block a lot of the flavor, but it's a great way to taste a cigar just for its smoke. See how the smoke, all different experiments you can do. I guarantee you, if you smoke any cigar with a straight cut and then you put a punch on it, you're going to have a lot of differences as far as, you know, how much flavor you get, if you get any of the flavors from the filler. But if I pull my tongue back, I don't get any of that saltiness from the tobacco. I don't get, you know, any of that twanginess from it. I, all I get is a lot of wood and strong coffee notes. Wood and coffee, wood and coffee. Almost a little hint of like something caramelish on the tip of the tongue, but not sweet at all. Just that kind of 
tone to it. Very nice draw. I'm impressed with the draw more than anything, and I'm very impressed with the burn so far. Uh, this this wrapper is really a beautiful oily color. Very nice. You know, I remember I never bought these, so these were either handed me handed to me by a rep or brought back from a trade show. And in either case, um, you know, they were probably a first release. And sometimes first releases are better, or maybe sometimes not, or sometimes the same, you never know. I really don't know what they're like right now. But I will tell you this, um, it, even though it's been in this bag for a little while, they've all been in cellophane, so they're really not aged per se. Uh, just so you know, cigars in cellophane, age approximately 70% slower than cigars that aren't in cellophane, okay? So for, a, for every seven years of aging that a Cuban cigar gets, a cigar in cellophane only gets one of the same amount of aging, okay? So to smoke an Esther Miranda uh, that's 10 years old that you didn't take out of the cellophane, you know, most of my audience is, I guess, probably 30 and up, maybe some 25s, but let's say 30 and up. So you'd have to 70, you'd be dead. You'd, you'd be dead uh, before you could try it, you know, unless you made it to 100, over 100 years old. So if you do want to try aging some domestic cigars, be sure to take them out of the cellophane. Otherwise, yeah. in a lot of cases with domestic cigars, not because unlike Cubans, and even some Cubans aren't that good for aging, but at least you're always dealing with all Cuban tobacco. With these domestic cigars, you all ha you have a lot of different types of blends. So you really don't know what's good for aging or not until you try it. Sometimes you're better off leaving it in the cellophane, and that way, in that sense, keeping it as close as possible to factory condition. All right, so we're a good way uh, into the first third, and so far, we've got a strong base of wood with a lot of strong coffee notes. Um, and some tiny little hints of pepper, but really not much spice at all, hardly noticeable. Um, you got some salty twang in the filler area, the taste of the filler. And maybe a touch of something kind of, like a bit of caramel or something almost. Again, with no sweetness at all, but just like that kind of, that kind of essence. Nice, nice woody bouquet, and um, Exceptional draw, great construction so far. Got a little bit of an uneven burn thing going on here. It's all, all it is is the wrapper didn't go. I just, uh, I'll just hit that with the torch for a second there. Smoke is, smoke is not, the smoke is dense enough not to be called airy per se, but I wouldn't call it creamy either. Somewhere in the middle, kind of like a. Uh, a decent smoke with a with a cottony texture. Um, so far, not a terrible cigar. In fact, it's uh, it's quite enjoyable so far. There goes a tiny little bit of spice. Who knows? Maybe in the second third we'll start encountering a lot more spice. That's great. So what I'm going to do is just keep puffing away on this, and once we get into our second third, I'll come back. Uh, you know, I do urge you guys, like I said yesterday on the Part of the Short video, check out some of these articles, you know, uh, I'll, I think I put the links on them, but so, uh, yeah, I did, uh, but I didn't upload the second part yet, but check out these articles about the science behind the smoking and how, you know, how changes occur and why they occur and how to keep your cigar smoke cooler by leaving a bit of ash on the head. Great stuff, great stuff. When I read that one part about, and I've always noticed a little difference every time I ash a cigar, and that's what it was. By leaving just a, what did they say, a half inch or something? I, I forget the exact number, but by leaving just a little bit of ash at the head of your cigar, it acts as a buffer to oxygen, which passes through the head of the cigar that's lit, causing it to you know, combust and add a lot of heat to the cigar. And when you have a little bit of ash, it cools it by uh, up to, I think it said up to 50 to 80 degrees or something like that. A lot. A lot. Keeps your smoke a lot cooler. So when you can, you keep a little ash buffer at the head of your cigar. Not so much to be annoying to the people around to get them worried that, <laughs> you know, guys sitting next to you is watching you constantly because your ash is like, and you're like, 
fucked up. <laughs> He's like, I fucking sued. Oh, man. I've heard from several different sources, and I always wonder if this is one of those urban myths or not, but that Churchill used to put a paper clip into his cigar so that when he smoked it, he, he would have like, you know, an inch left and the ash would be on the entire thing. And he would do this to, to kind of really distract people he was negotiating with or talking to in diplomatic meetings and stuff. So, you know, he would be like talking about, let's say he wanted 50 more tanks or something and he's like, blah, blah, blah with a cigar. And they're just watching the cigar going, oh, yeah, 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 sure, 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 Winston. Yeah, you, you got it. Uh, the fucking Her Majesty's rug, man. <laughs> Anyway, I wonder if, if anybody can... I don't know if that's really true or not. I should look it up again and see what... But I think it might be an urban myth. I, I don't know if I can picture... He was a pretty sharp guy and a little funny, but... I don't know. He was to the point where he'd sit there and shove a paper clip in his cigar. Anyway. We'll be back with the second third of the Nesta Miranda Art Deco. What do you buy? Dr. Joe.